All right, everybody. Hello, hello. So excited you are here. We are going to do, uh, I have a presentation for you to go over some marketing tips for a pop-up shop geared around drinkware. But if your product that you put in a pop-up shop isn't drinkware, all these tips are going to apply to you. Now, as we're going through, um, please, if any thoughts or ideas or, hey, how do you do this? Or talk to me more about that. Um, if you have any questions, do drop them in the Q&A. Joy and Anita are checking those out and Joy's gonna collect those questions um, for me. So when I go into working on the, uh, <laughs> Anita, <laughs> I'm so, your camera's still on. <laughs> She's got that's a little Felicia. grandbaby. No, that's <laughs> Felicia. Oh, Felicia, we see you. Your I don't know if you wanted to keep your camera on. Your little baby, <laughs> so cute. Okay, usually Felicia does turn her camera off. So, um, but how adorable. Okay, sorry, Felicia. <laughs> um, okay, so ask the question. Ask away your questions. We are here to help you and answer any questions you have. Joy and I both have um, retail experience, not just in doing trade shows and pop-ups, but also a retail store. So we are together combined a wealth of information for you to pick our brains. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll share my screen with you. Um, so we can just jump right into that presentation. And then we're going to go into my overhead and design space. And I'm going to make four different cups with you and give you some of my tips and tricks on how to make the cups. And we'll talk about how to personalize them, um, how to prep for personalization and things like that. So this class is level up your drinkware offering. So the first part to starting a booth at a, either a pop-up shop or a trade show or your farmer's market, anything like that is to discover your niche. So what does that mean, your niche? Like that's really confusing um, to some people as you're getting started and you have so many ideas and so many different things you want to do. It is helpful to start to narrow it down and figure out what sets you apart. Now, in this journey to find your niche, I want to reassure you that you will stumble and you will restart numerous times. And that's really part of the process of finding your niche. So I don't want you to get discouraged. I want you to give yourself a little bit of grace in your journey. Um, but some tips I have on finding out what your niche is, is to discover your passion. So what is it that got you excited about signing up to have a booth at the trade show or your local farmer's market? What is it that is gets you up out of bed in the morning? What excites you? What do you find yourself dreaming about? And that is your passion. So first you need to kind of identify what is your passion and then let it roll from there. Once you know what your passion is, you want to figure out who your target customer is. So what is it that you're passionate about that other people need? And what space are you going to fill with your product? So maybe your product is tumblers or mugs or wine glasses, and you're going to be doing um, wine glasses for bridal showers. That's your passion about the new bride. Your target customer is um, a new bride. So then you're going to narrow that down and start doing your market research. So your market research will include your pricing, your materials. It will include what else is out there already. Again, back to your passion. What led you down this path where you felt like there was a need for something? You were looking for something in the marketplace and you couldn't find it. So you decided, hey, I can just make that myself. And that was, that's maybe what started you on this path. So who else in your area, in your market is already doing what you're doing? And how are you going to differentiate yourself from what's currently on the market? Um, you really, and when you're doing your market research, you really want to make sure you're not entering an oversaturated market. Um, so what that means is if you go to some of your local farmers markets and you're like, I'm just going to do my market research and see what's out there. 
And if everybody at the farmer's market, let's say there's out of 20 booth, booths, three or four booths are selling candles, how are your candles going to be different than the candles that are already in the market? And is there already market saturation with those three or four vendors? Should you be looking for another product to promote? So that's kind of where you get into what is your unique selling point? What are you going to do that's different from what you already see out in the market? Is it a, a basket of, of merchandise that you're putting together for somebody? Um, who's your target customer again? Like if your target customer is brides and you're marketing towards people who have new homes, you're not matching up your target customer with your marketing. So know what your unique selling point is and sell that to your target customer. Also, you wanna know what your profit point is. At first, you may not be very profitable. You're learning, you're figuring out how to do things, you're trying to figure out where the best price point is for the products you need to make your product. So you may spend a little bit extra money at the beginning on the front end of it, just trying to figure all of that out. So know where your profit point is and know what you need to do to hit that profit point. So if you know, okay, these are my costs, it's gonna cost me $250 to enter this market and it's gonna cost me another $250 to prepare my materials for that market. You need to profit over that, anything over that $500 initial investment can be considered your profit point. So if you want to make $500 at that, at that event, how much do you need to sell your merchandise for and will your market bear the cost of that price? So this is all part of that last step of making a plan. Now, your plan may be written down on a simple piece of uh, paper towel. You may get some uh, business software to start with a business plan. You can even go to your Better Business Bureau and get help from um, retired business people will give you help not the Better Business Bureau, it's called something else. Um, I'll think of it, but there's an organization that will help you write your business plan and even help you look for financing. So the make a plan is an important part of your process and your journey, and you'll always be tweaking and updating your plan. So don't write a plan and set it on the shelf. Write a plan and refer to it often and update it and change it. So those are some of the steps you can take to discovering your niche and deciding and determining how you're going to be different than everybody else in the market. Now, once you've decided your, your niche, the next step is to do your marketing and branding. As you work on your marketing, here's a few of my ideas to share with you. If you're doing local market, like local uh, farmer's market or local fair, craft fairs or something local, Print flyers are an exceptional way to get the word out. You can hang them on community bulletin boards. You can hand them out to friends. Even have your list of all the events you're attending for the season in a flyer in your booth. So if somebody comes in and they they see something that you have, maybe they're not ready to commit to it to a day, but they'll come to another one of your events. So print flyers is a really helpful tool for you to market your business. Word of mouth is by far um, always seem to be the most successful marketing. It's free. It costs you nothing. When you have a good product and a good customer base, that word of mouth marketing is key. So you may want to consider doing something like a refer a friend program. If your product happens to be t-shirts and you make t-shirts for your local football team, Add a little um, piece of marketing into that t-shirt that says, hey, I'm really glad I made these shirts for your football team. Come back and get 10% off your next purchase or tell a friend about my business and they'll get 10% off. Or put two coupons in and you get 10% off and your friend gets 10% off. This is going to help you build a community that will help you build demand for your product. The community will also direct you where your where your plans are going to go. 
the community will start asking, hey, do you have this? Or I'm looking for this. And you'll start to explore and expand options that are available for you to grow your business. Social media is an excellent tool. And if you're just getting started and you're feeling a little intimidated, so don't we all. <laughs> um, my advice to social media is just jump in there and give it a try. Again, that community will let you know what works and what doesn't work. But at a minimum, if you're doing something local, make sure you're telling your friends who are local where your event's going to be and where they can find your products. Now, part of marketing is to have a consistent look. So I recommend using something like Canva to help you design your marketing tools. You can set your color scheme and build your logo right in Canva and build out from there. Um, that is a great tool. It's called C-A-N-V-A. It's actually what I use to do this presentation today. And I use it quite a bit for a lot of different um, marketing campaigns that I'm working on. So check that out. It will help you give your um, brand a consistent look. And I say consistent look because you want people to find you. And if you're always changing your look, like let's say one event you're looking you're looking um, 1980s, it's it, people really aren't going to know what to look for at the event. So you want to make sure you have a consistent look. And then the last part to your marketing and branding is your packaging. So you want to make sure you have your logo and your contact information on your packaging. So when someone leaves your booth with your product, they know how to find more. And that may be um, adding a, a sticker or something that a magnet that has your contact information on it. So for example, I buy my coffee from a local uh, coffee brewer called Black Nerd Coffee. And I got my coffee home the first time and I put it, you know, in my coffee and I was making it and I was ready to buy more. And my husband had thrown out the coffee package. So it took a little bit of effort to find the brand, but I found them and I was able to get more coffee. And my suggestion was, gosh, I wish I had a sticker with your contact information I could put on the side of my coffee machine. And he thought that was a great idea. So he did that and implemented that. And now I have his sticker on the side of my coffee machine. So whenever I get low and I need new coffee, I can reach out um, and get my local coffee. So the other thing is add-ons. You may think your focus of your business is tumblers or cups or mugs, but think about the add-ons to really maximize each and every sale. Give yourself a goal that says, okay, my my I want to make um, a $50 sale to everybody who walks in my booth. Now that may not happen every time, but that's your goal. So if somebody's buying a $24 cup, how are you going to upsell them to purchase $26 worth, additional $26 worth of products? That's your add-ons. So your add-ons may be things like um, if you're selling tea, you may have cards like I had in that last slide. Let me go back there. If you're selling teacups or mugs, you may have a collection of tea or coffee themed cards that are on brand for you and an easy add-on purchase for somebody else. So your pricing may have a buy one, get one promotion. So buy one tumbler, get a second tumbler free. You may want to encourage your customers to touch the project products. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a booth and been like, oh, I can't touch anything. I can't pick it up. I can't feel it. Encourage that experience for people who come into your booth. If they get it in their hands, they're more likely to, you've just increased the likelihood of them to purchase something from you. Another great tip to add on is if your product is a giftable item. So I know uh, everyone's getting ready and gearing up for back to school. And soon after back to school starts, we start gifting our teachers, our fabulous teachers for doing their job with our kids. So if you have, um, let's say you do tumblers and you do school themed tumblers, make, make them giftable, add a tag to them. So somebody who comes in to buy something for themselves are thinking, oh, I have this event or the 100 days of schools is coming up. I need to get that. Or, you know, whatever is an upcoming event, 
Think about that and have those as giftable items. You may even have them packaged in cellophane with a tag of a two from. So somebody can buy their tumbler and buy one for a friend. The companion products. This is where if you're selling uh, tumblers or coffee mugs, let's say you're doing it locally. If I were to do a booth locally, I might ask um, my coffee guy, Black Nerd Coffee, I may say to him, hey, do you have um, samples of your coffee I can include in my coffee mugs? Or can I can I give away samples of your coffee in my booth? How can we partner here? Um, and so you may have companion products and it may not be something you specifically sell. It may be something you acquire from somewhere else. So that's, you know somebody who makes bath bombs and you in the tub. So maybe you sell a wine glass with a bath bomb in it. So think of those companion gifts that increase your ADS, which is your average dollar sale. So you want to bring up that average dollar sale for everybody you sell to. Customization is another great way to do an add-on sale or upsell your product. So a tumbler is great and it's cute, but if you can customize it, it makes it unique and it makes you a unique shop for people to come back to. The last part of doing those add-ons is having products in your booth that are offered at a, a varying price range. And I mean that because somebody may come into your booth with $5 to spend and somebody may come in to your booth with $100 to spend. So you need to have products in your booth, in your space that hits those different price points. So somebody may just come in and say, well, I can only buy two cards today, but those tumblers are really cute and I'll come back and purchase those at your next event because I have your flyer and I know where you're going to be and I'm going to stalk you and come back when I have the funds to pick up that next product. So think about having a variety of price ranges. Um, maybe your, your area can has like a really great Dollar General store that has a lot of tumblers. And so you might decide, you know what, I'm not selling the pre-made tumblers, but I'm selling the vinyl that people can add to their own tumblers. And I say the dollar store because um, they have pretty inexpensive wine glasses and things like that. So maybe your product, in, if you're not selling the fully made wine glass, maybe you just need to sell the decals and let the other people do the hard work. So think about how you, the varying of price range Here's the finished project. Here's a DIY kit. It's less expensive to do the DIY kit and you can do that or you can buy it finished. So think about how you can vary those price ranges. Now, the last part is to wear your brand. You are what you wear. So I say that with this picture like a boss, knowing what your niche is and knowing who your customer is, you're So you may want to consider wearing your logo, wearing your saying on a t-shirt or sweatshirt or jacket. It reinforces your passion, not just for yourself, but for everybody who comes into your booth. They know what you're about. It also reinforces that consistent look um, of your branding. It's the color, it's the style, it's all consistent. So people know Again, you're easy to spot out, you're easy to find, they know who you are. It also will allow you to test out new products. So maybe you're thinking you're heading into the fall season, you're gonna do mugs and tumblers or lily glasses. Maybe you wanna do t-shirts. So maybe in the spring you wanna do some t-shirts. So take some of your best selling um, images that you put on your glassware and put that on a shirt and test out your market. Are they ready for t-shirts? Now, after the class, you can always find me on my social media pages, either through YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook, and my you can find me at kesley.365. So I hope if we don't get to all your questions in this class, which hopefully we will, but if we don't, um, I want to let you know that you can reach out to me at any time through those social media networks. All right, Joy, are there any questions that came in that I need to answer um, live before we jump into design space. I don't think so. I think uh, Anita and I have been hearing lots of great ideas from folks who are in the class. I like I like seeing what they're thinking about and, and I 
you know, social media platforms that they want to advertise on or, or different ways that they want to do things. So I think they're all pumped and excited and ready to see what you have next, Kaz. Awesome. I love it. And thank you to Sarah for saying Chamber of Commerce. That's what I was talking about to help get you started with of knowledge. So check that out as you're getting started. And I do really um, want to recommend that you do set out a plan, some sort of plan, even if it's on just a little sticky note that you will continue to evolve, but you kind of need to know where you're going. So that's a great, that's a great thing. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into um, Design Space. Now I have my first Tumblr, actually before I dive into Design Space, what I'm going to do is we're gonna to go to my overhead camera because I have my first project is set up for you. Sorry for my, <laughs> it always freezes here. Um, let me set this aside. My first project I wanna show you all is a cute little wine glass that I've gone ahead and cut out the design in um, design space. And I have this wine glass tumbler. Um, it's not a tumbler, it's a, it's a glass wine glass. I added glitter to the bottom of this. Now I added the glitter using Mod Podge. So I put a light layer of Mod Podge on the glass and then um, I added the glitter. Now, what I did to get this even line, let me show you that because I know that's, that's always something I found challenging. Um, so what I do is I take my, um, sorry, that's my, for my tall glass. I take my dry erase marker and I tape it to something that is the height that I want my line to be. So then when I drag that along my glass, I'll put that on there and then I'll move my glass like this along and I get the line consistently on my glass. Now I haven't sealed my glass here, so I've got a little bit of glitter coming off. That's okay. Um, let me just put this up here. Um, so I just draw that line right on my glass and then I use blue um, painter's tape to mark off that line. Now, once that line is marked off, I can add my um, Mod Podge below that line and then add my glitter, my glue, and then my glitter. And once it's dried, then you're gonna seal it again with another coat of Mod Podge. And I do want to recommend, especially with a glass like this that and that, that has the glitter on it, that you want to um sorry, let me just grab my little roller here. You don't want to uh you have them lose the glitter as they're going, as they're working on, as they're using their glass. So you wanna make sure this is hand wash only. Now I just use these um, lint rollers to hold my glass in place. You can use a pool noodle, it's very helpful. Um, however you can get your glass to stay in a spot for you. Let me see, okay. So now I've got that in its place and I've used these little alcohol wipes to wipe around the glass so I have a clean surface to work on. Then I've taken my, um, I've gone ahead and cut this out um, using Cricut Smart Vinyl. Now the Smart Vinyl, this is the Shimmer Smart Vinyl and you can see how easy it is to weed. Make sure you don't pull off a piece I don't wanna pull off. Hey, Kessler, this is Felicia. Yeah. If you're able to move your camera um, down a little bit so they can see more of the glass, Okay, let me, I think I'll have to push this up. Okay. Good point. Okay, we'll push that up like that. All right. So here we go. Now, um, I'm just going to show you how easy this is to weed. And I've already got one um, set up and weeded for me with my um, strong grip transfer tape. So since this is the shimmer vinyl, I want to use the strong grip transfer tape. So I've already got my, um, I've weeded out the inside of it and I've got my strong grip transfer tape on my piece here already. Now you'll notice my glass is curved. So this can always be a challenge to, um, 
to work around the curve. So what I like to do is first trim down my, um, I like to trim down my transfer tape here, and then you're going to trim into it. Now I have this on a piece of parchment paper on the back. So I'm just gonna like trim into between my line, my letters here. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can work around those curves. So I'm gonna just trim this in a little bit, go up here, I can trim down in here. I'm gonna trim down into the top here. I'll just go down into that W, get a nice trim there. I'll trim into the sides. Now I'm not cutting my, um, I'm not cutting into my vinyl anywhere. I'm just trimming out my transfer tape. And I might should have pulled my butcher paper off first, but let's just do this this way. Okay. So now I have this trimmed up and around. So it's going to be easier to place on my glass here. So with the center part of my, um, sorry, with the top line of my glitter here, I don't know if you can see that, that top line of the glitter there. I'm going to line up the top line of my transfer tape along that line so that it lines up evenly. So I just line that up and I hold it in a taco style and I put it down like this. Now, if I were doing a booth and I needed to add some customization to my booth, what I would do, I would have, obviously have my glitter pre-done and ready to go. And then I would have a variety of different sayings cut out that I could add to the glass as I go. So let's say I have a bunch of, you know, orange, maybe I do some orange glitter, some red glitter, whatever the season's calling for, or my, my location's calling for, you know, maybe you're doing this at a school booth. So you want to do your colors in a school, in a school pattern. And so I'm just working this down from the inside out to the center. I'm using my slits in the transfer tape to work out any bumps in my vinyl. And I can just pick this up as I go along if I need to, and just work those little bumps down, any bubbles or anything like that, I can just work those down. Now, once I've got it down pretty smooth, I'm just gonna come through with my finger again and press it down here. So if you're in a booth at a show, you can offer, a, you can increase the number of products you offer by having multiple colors pre-weeded, pre pre-cut, ready to go. And all you have to do is add it onto the glass. And then your, your client can pick it up either at the end of the show, you can hold it for them or you can give it to them right then and there if you have it ready. So you wanna have a few ready to go and then a few um, stocked up. This helps you so that you don't have an overabundance of stock. Let's say you thought this was the cutest design ever, but the people who came to the booth maybe didn't think so. So you had a whole bunch of which please ready to go and it didn't sell. But having it, um, having it without it on the glass, you can add it to the glass or you can use the glass again for a New Year's um, market or you can use it you know, for Christmas Eve or anything like that. But this is a cute glass, this which please. And this one, I just think this is cute to sell in a set of four um, to, you know, this is great for a girl's night out or something like that, um, or give it to your sisters, um, anything like that. So this is a really fun one. And I, it's glitter. It's, I use the Smart um, Shimmer Vinyl. And with the Smart Vinyl, you don't need to use um, your mat. So you can cut it really quick and you can cut it out as long as your vinyl is. And I'm just going to set this off to the side here because I'm going to grab my next one to show you. So this one is um, a single layer. The shimmer vinyl would allow you to do a little bit more of an up price and having the glitter on the glass takes more time. So you might sell that at a little bit of a higher price than another one. I'm gonna set this one up. Wow. 
glass. So I have this wine glass here. I did this glass with a stem. So this one has the stem and I added the glitter onto the stem. Um, this is a fine glitter, glitter, Elena, that I used. Yes, it's a, it has like a silver and black to it. Um, Michael's has a great selection of all the different um, glitters that are available and the Mod Podge is all there and everything. So there's quite a bit you can do. And I saw somebody ask a question about adding rhinestones. I was thinking it would be super cute to add some rhinestones along the bottom edge of the glass here. Just add there, or I may add them on the top here. Just again, that is something that is the, the cost of that is not very expensive to add those rhinestones, but that's a little touch that takes your project to the next level above and beyond what somebody else will do. Now for this glass, I used my Cricut Joy and I cut this out using the Cricut Joy um, and I did the um, permanent vinyl. And I love this set of Cricut Joy vinyl. This one has five different colors in the, in the kit. So it all coordinates together. So that's a really great, great way to do it. Um, Leslie, yeah. if, have you used Mod Podge? And if you have, what was the product you used? So I used, I used regular Mod Podge. Let me see if I have it handy. Um, I have two different Mod Podges. Um, this is a dish, this is a dishwasher safe gloss Mod Podge. Um, so it's got the blue packaging, it's by Plaid. And you do wanna look at your, um, you wanna look at your packaging because it'll tell you if it's for paper, or like this one is dishwasher safe. Um, but I would not recommend putting a glitter glass into the dishwasher. You definitely want to have that as hand wash, um, even though that says it's dishwasher safe. Um, I still would hand wash it. Okay, so, and you you can put like a little marketing into your glass when you sell it, and that will tell people what your business is, where they can find you and everything like that. So you want to add that marketing into your, into your glass. Now this one here, this, I use this taller <laughs> stand here to get my, um, my line on this glass. So I use this one on this glass here. I just went choop and I drew the line around it. Now I thought it would be really fun to have a ghoul gang. And the reason I did that was I really wanted um, people to purchase more than one wine glass from me. So if I did it as a ghoul gang, I am hoping they'll buy more than one. Now, when you cut it out, you may notice that you use, so I use five different colors here. And as you can see on the sheet, you do sort of have a lot of waste. Now in pricing this out, I would price it out based on the inches that you used of the vinyl, how much that cost was, and then multiply that cost by two or three, depending on what your market will bear. Um, so I, I do that on the cost. If you didn't want to um, use as much vinyl, like the U, it's just the U and three little stars, I cut out, um, I printed out the design on a piece of paper. Again, you could do this in black and white. And then you can layer parchment paper over that to line up your design from here. So why don't I show you how to do that? If I just had, um, let's see, where's my transfer tape? This one, we're just gonna use regular transfer tape. And it's kind of a big design here. I hope I didn't make it too big. I'm just gonna do it four inches. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that four inches. So you start off with your transfer tape and we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Um, Sarah, I have not used epoxy. Um, I'm not that familiar with that. I know that there are a lot of people that use epoxy on tumblers and then use their Cricut to cut out the design and then add the epoxy on top of that. Um, and there are, there's quite a bit of, of information on that. I'm not familiar. I don't 
that's not, I haven't gotten into that yet. My craft room won't expand to that, <laughs> to that much space yet for me. Um, and I just, don't, I don't think I'd make enough of those right now, but that is a very, very popular way to make tumblers is to use the epoxy. And again, for something like that, I would, you know, check your market and make sure that your market can bear another, um, another epoxy tumbler if you're doing local stuff. Just, you know, just make sure. That's my best advice. So always check your market. Sorry about this. I usually have this ready to go. Let me see. I just need to get a corner of this started and then we'll just start putting this together. Hmm. All right, let me do another piece here. So again, this is another one where you could have your glitter glasses ready to go or your wine glasses ready to go and have a few um, out for display and for people to touch and, and feel how it works. And then you can always go back in and add, um, add more designs as people purchase them. So for this one, the first thing I'm going to do is my G here. And I'm just going to put my uh, transfer tape down so that I can pick up my little G and the stars. And when you're working with um, the smart vinyl, because the backing is um, thicker, it's so the backing's thicker, so you don't have to use um, a mat. You do want to do, I usually do like a rolled and fold to get it off. Ah. And I just put up stronger transfer tape. So I just picked up the wrong transfer tape. I have strong grip transfer tape here. This may be a mess. Let's see. So there's my uh, going strong there. Now I just need to add in my other letters as I go across. So I can just go from one color to the next color and add this on. Let's get this lined up here. So if you didn't have like all your cut pieces to cut out together on one piece like I did, and you just did one at a time, you would just position your other pieces underneath here as you go. So I would do this like this. Let's grab my white box here. Hopefully this, I'm gonna put my paper on this so I'll dull that down a bit. Okay, so now I've got my white box there and my paper there. And then I just need to line up my A's and my L's. And again, as you're learning how to do this, you may um, you may take more time to do it. So your, your learning curve, that's part of the learning curve part of it. It takes more time. Okay, so I'm just gonna bend back that um, vinyl as I go, removing this. And again, I, I apologize. I picked up a piece of strong grip vinyl, strong grip transfer tape, and I'm not using glitter vinyl. So hopefully everything will work out just fine. I'm counting on that. Okay, so now my G-O. Now I'm, this piece of paper underneath is just a piece of parchment paper. And that helps me, um, helps it so it doesn't stick to the glass or anything. So I've got my G and my A in place. Now I'm ready for my other G and the N. So again, I'm just going to peel that back. Position this onto here. And then I can peel this right back on the front of it. So you see how everything is lining up? And then we'll just take it upside down again. And again, I just peel this right off. And if it ever is difficult, just bend it like that, right at the edge of that uh, vinyl and it pops right off for you. Okay, now we're gonna do, I've got two more colors, Ghoul Gang. 
So this may be, again, like when I'm talking about having um, your design on your bot, like on your shirt, you may want to make a shirt with this design and wear that for your event. Okay, so let's line up my H's here. I should first let me make sure my, so I'll line up my G's and then I'll line up my H's. And when you're doing something with so many layers like this, you do wanna take into account how many layers you're using on your design so that your pricing is in line with the materials you you put into it. So my glass with just the one black shimmer may be less, uh, I may charge less for that glass than a glass like this one with so many different layers of vinyl on it. Oops. All right, got one more to go. We're just gonna put this down here line that up. And then I have my last one, which is my yellow. So again, like I mentioned before, if you wanted to, um, you know, you could cut this piece out of a much smaller piece than I did. Um, because you could put your stars up there and you didn't have to have everything lined up on the vinyl like I had mine. And having having the printed out version of it definitely helps with that helps you line it up. And then you can just use that over and over again for each different design you use. Oops, I lost a, I'm gonna come back and add that little diamond on the end. Yeah, I'm gonna come back and add that little diamond on the end. Okay, so now I can put my um, bright pad away and I'll grab my wine glass here. So I'd love to hear if you guys wanna put in the Q and A, what kind of projects you're going to be making <clears throat> this fall or what you're thinking about. I'd love to see that. Okay, so once I've got this done, I'm gonna just take my, um, another little piece of my parchment paper, put that onto the parchment paper and then trim around it. Again, the trim does make it easier to go onto your design and you have less, less you have to navigate around. And then we're gonna cut into it again so that it um, so that it cuts up. So we'll just cut into it, making sure not to cut your vinyl. But that cutting into it is a key step. And I really wanna encourage you not to skip that little part of it. And this is something you can have, um, you can do this ahead of time, have that all cut up and ready to go so that when you're at your event, you just have to apply it to the color class glass that they've chosen. Okay. You can get all that trimmed up. Now, again, I do wanna mention, I selected strong grip vinyl. So strong grip vinyl, what that does is it, you use it when you use the shimmer vinyl um, cause your vinyl has a texture to it. So you need that to hold onto the, um, the vinyl. This is not, this is the permanent vinyl and it doesn't have the texture. So I'm hoping um, everything goes smoothly for me here. But I just wanna prep you guys that it, it might not. So my glass curves down here and with that cut in my um, transfer paper, I can really work out the, um, the placing of the A to make sure that there's no bubbles on it. And then I can come over here and smooth down my letter N and make sure there's no bubbles on that guy and work my way around. So even if I find I'm getting a bubble, I just come back in and I trim my transfer tape. Now you do wanna make sure that you don't um, rip your vinyl. Your transfer tape might tear a little bit and that's okay as you're moving it around, but you wanna make sure that you don't rip your vinyl. We're just gonna work our way here working out any of those air bubbles to make sure nothing comes between your vinyl and your glass. And you can even overlap your transfer tape as you're going if you need to, that's not, that's perfectly okay. 
I'm just gonna keep cutting and working it in. So I definitely, if this is like your, if you're doing this as your first show, you may wanna have this all done ahead of time um, because you can get some air bubbles in there and you just want, need to be able to work them through. And maybe you don't wanna do that in front of somebody who's buying their, who's buying their glass from you. You wanna look like a pro. That is very important. You wanna look like you are the professional. Oops, there we go. All right, how's that coming? There we go, looking good. Now I'm just gonna move across to my G's here and I didn't cut that in, do that. I'll just make it so I can work with each letter as I go. So I'll just work in that first G and then I'll come down and add my second G. And sometimes you may find with those slits and the curve of your glass that your, um, that your one vinyl piece may come on top of your transfer tape. Like right there, I can see the corner is on top of my transfer tape. So I just am going to pull that back here and pull this piece back here so that that goes underneath that. I'll just pull that back like that, pop that one underneath. And we want that one to go there. And I'm just gonna keep working that through. All right, now I'm hoping that my vinyl will come off okay, my transfer tape. Again, it comes off in pieces and that's okay. I just have to, as I'm going, make sure that I'm not tearing my trans my vinyl. So as you're peeling it off, you wanna make sure you're not tearing your vinyl. Now, another method is to use um, the water method and you put your, you put water underneath your vinyl before you apply the vinyl. And that allows you to work out any bubbles as you go along. So that if you have, if you're gonna make your gl glasses and cups ahead of time, that's a great method because you can, um, you'll have it all, all worked down and I give it time to dry. That method does require time to dry. Now, when you're setting up your booth, um, I found so many cute crates and things at Michael's to, um, to give dimension and height in my booth. So that's, a, and even like their little extra pieces, like their, um, those felt balls are fantastic little decorations to work in a booth. Yeah. All right. I think my strong grip transfer tape is, is giving me a hiccup here. Let's see if I can pull this off here. All right, so there's part of it. And then I just go back in with my fingers if there's any bubbles or anything like that, I just go back in and pull that, push that down. All right, so you would keep working your, your transfer tape off. And I'm gonna probably set this aside so that um, we can, so it's gonna take me a little bit longer than normal to get this off, but I'm gonna set this aside. And if I have time at the end when I'm answering questions, I can pick this one back up and finish pulling off my transfer tape. Like I said, I use the strong grip, so I just need to give myself a little bit of time there to work it off and make sure I don't tear my, um, my vinyl. But you can see it's coming off and I'm, it's having those slits in there is so crucial when you're trying to work around a curved surface. There we go, a little piece of that. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna set this aside because I don't wanna take up too much of our time today with this. I have other projects to show you. I'm gonna set this aside. And if I have time at the end, I'll come back to that one and, show, and we'll go back to that one. Sorry about that. <laughs> Those things happen. Good thing I caught it early on though. Um, maybe I would have, I probably if I had done that at home, um, I would have recut the black G so that I wouldn't have continued using that uh, stronger tape once I knew it. Now, my next one 
is I'm going to use the, I use black vinyl, uh, black, white, and orange permanent smart vinyl. And on this cup, I'm going to be using a Libby cup. So these are really fun um, beer cups. And this one, this design here is in design space and it's gotten a lot of uh, comments on it. People really seem to like this cup. And I really like this style of cup because you're working with a straight edge and you're not working with an angle. So that makes it a little bit easier. But again, I have um, some layered vinyl here. Now on this one, what I did, let me grab my glass. I have my, the spooky season and a ghost here, which you probably can't see. These I'm gonna layer before putting them on the glass. And then I'm going to just take these little black flowers and put them around the design. So let's go ahead and get out some more parchment paper and we'll do this design together again. So I wanna make sure I have regular transfer tape. This is regular transfer tape. The strong grip transfer tape says strong grip tape. So if you're ever wondering, you wanna make sure you have the gray transfer tape that is, um, that is not the strong grip transfer tape. So you just pull that right off. And then we're gonna use a little work surface here. Now, when I'm doing, um, when I'm working with transfers, I do like to have this, um, like a piece of parchment paper underneath me. And the reason I do that, I need to get a bigger piece here. Sorry guys, I'm gonna make some noise. Now, the reason I do that is so that my transfer tape doesn't stick to my work surface. So I can work off the edge of my design here without my transfer tape um, losing, like getting stuck to my table, my work surface. So I'll take my transfer tape and we're just gonna pop that right down on here. Line up my bottoms here. Here we go. Just gonna line that right up. I wanna make sure I'm smooth on this. So I just smooth that right down. Okay, so this is the first layer. It says spooky season. When is it better to use the strong grip tape? The strong grip transfer tape you wanna use when your um, vinyl has a texture to it. So if you're using like a glitter vinyl or something like that, you want to use it. Um, that's when you would use the strong grip transfer tape. And that's because your vinyl, um, the vinyl, the glitter shimmer vinyl has a texture to it. And you need that texture to, um, sorry, I shouldn't talk and <laughs> peel off at the same time. You need that, um, you need the stronger grip to grab the texture and really pull that off. All right, now this one, this little spooky season cup, I just love these, uh, these cups in this design. Again, it's a really easy one. And if you wanted to add customization in your booth, this is one of the cups you could very easily have your design ready to go, um, the base of your design, and then you add a name to it <clears throat> on the design. So you could do that on the go. So you're just customizing a little bit of it and you also can sell the cup ready to go. Now, so this is a good question. It's how do you customize in a booth? First, you need to make sure that your booth has um, power to it. And then you can have your Cricut Joy is a great tool to have with you. And say your, your iPad or something, <laughs> um, you can have your iPad with you and your Cricut Joy and really cut and customize right on the spot for your customers. Um, if you're doing like, let's say you're doing a local one, a local craft fair or something like that, and maybe you have some football themed merchandise, you're getting ready for um, football season, maybe you're doing some blankets for tailgating or something like that. So you may have like your football design done 
but you want to add um, the school's name. So maybe you have a whole bunch of school names already cut out, and then you're just adding that one piece to the design on the fly. Okay, so now I have my little ghost here. It's a little bit hard to see because of the um, because of the white, and it's got a little bit of glitter left in there. But my ghost is going to go in the middle of my spooky season. So we're going to put that right in the middle there. I want to make sure I don't have any. Oops, look what I did. I meant to do my. I meant to do my um, parchment paper because you'll see how easy it comes up there. But now I've got to unweed all that again. I mean, un unstick it. But that's okay. So we're just going to pull this off here. I want to make sure I get my white to come up. And the other thing I love about um, my Cricut vinyl is it always says on the back if it's a temporary vinyl or a permanent vinyl, which is so helpful to make sure you're using the right vinyl. You do wanna use the permanent vinyl for your glassware. It is, um, it is uh, you can keep it in items outside and you can put it through the dishwasher. Again, I do recommend um, marking all of your handmade glasses with hand wash only. Make sure that it, it it's hand wash only. Oops, don't stick to me. All right. So I'm just walking my way around my design here. Got another flower up in my corner. Put that down. There we go. One more orange flower, and we are done. Okay, so there we go. There's my spooky season. And now at this point, I could, um, if I wanted to, I could put my black flowers on to this wrap piece, but I'm going to just do, do it with these little pieces here. All right, so let me grab my face cloth so I can roll up that, roll that up. I use a face cloth too to keep my design from sticking. I mean, my glass from rolling. So I'll just put that right there. And I have just one little piece here that's curled up a bit. I'm just gonna fix that. So you just wanna double check your design, make sure everything is came off your transfer tape okay. Kesley, okay. what is the cup that you are covering right now? And where did you get it? This is, um, it's called a, a beer can cup. And um, I found this one online. So I found, I think I found it on Amazon. And then I also got the little, the top was sold separately. So you add that on there. And you can add a little um, straw to it and stuff. So it's it's a really, they're really fun. Okay, so I just take my design. And again, I'm just going to, Put it on the center here. Same technique, we're gonna do the taco fold. And so we're gonna start from the center and then work our way around the edge. And once you've got it on, we're just gonna flip it over. Now your transfer tape is reusable. So once, you, once you've put your design down, you can, um, reuse your transfer tape over and over again until it's not sticky anymore. But see how easy that is? I didn't have to cut anything. It all went right down and then I just burnish it on. Now, when you do, um, when you use vinyl, I do like to usually uh, leave them out for 24 hours and let everything set in before, um, before using it. So if you are doing a show, plan ahead a little bit. If you're doing customization on the fly at the show, let um, you know, let your attendees know that they need to let it dry. Okay, so now I can just take these. Look at how cute is that? All right, let me um, grab my little black flowers here. 
And again, this is something you could offer as customization. Maybe you want to do different colors. So maybe you want to do, you know, offer it in orange and pink, in orange and blue, not maybe not orange and black. You can totally offer up any color combinations you want. And you can even um, include the, the little flowers for people to do on their own at home if you wanted to. How fun. All right. Now I do have these um, projects will be available in my, in my, um, let's see. The projects will be available in my design space. So if you follow my profile, Kesley Anderson, all of my projects I share in design space. And I think that looks pretty cute. I don't think I'm going to add that last one on there. So there's one cup there. And now when I see these at Boost, um, it's really cute to put um, tissue in there so you can really see the design. So you may want to get like a light brown tissue to put into it. Um, so that your design really stands out. Let's see if I can get on the dark one here. Oh, there you go. Isn't that fun? Very cute. All right. So that is, those are the, the projects I wanted to share with you for the class today. Joy, before we sign off, and Anita, before we sign off, because we are at, that it goes so fast. The time just goes so fast. Are there any, were there any questions that you guys, thought we should answer live or anything? The last one is how do you seal the cups? How do you seal the cups? Good question. So it varies. if everyone has a different technique, I tend not to seal my cups um, because I don't off or something like that. So I tend not to uh, seal my cups. I tell people to wash them by hand. Um, I, you can even put like on the bottom of your cup, handmade, wash with care or wash by hand on the bottom of your cup. There is a spray acrylic. Anita, is that what it's called? Yes. So Anita uses a spray acrylic on her cups um, to seal them. You can, some people, I've seen some people like use Mod Podge again. I'll do that. And I know I say that wrong, don't I? It's Mod Podge. My mom used to say Mod Podge. <laughs> so I say it that way. Um, I will do this, the Mod Podge dishwasher seal, this one, not the paper one. I'll do this one on my glitter. But again, I don't recommend putting that through the washing machine, even if I put <laughs> dishwasher safe stuff on there. So, all right, guys, well, thank you. this class has been recorded. So you'll get a recording of the class along with um, a survey to fill out from Michael's. And please do let us know what other classes you'd like to see, um, what other information you'd like. Hit me up on my social media and I can answer any questions that Joy or Anita didn't get to. Or if you had questions, you maybe just didn't want to post for everybody. So thanks, guys. Thanks, guys, for your help. Thank you, Kesley. Oh,